Hello, it's Phil here at Digital DJ Tips, looking at the RMX60 mixer from Reloop, which we recently had in this setup with a couple of Reloop media players, and a few of you asked about the mixer, so we thought we'd, uh, we'd review the mixer as well. So this is the RMX60. It's one of two mixers in Reloop's range, the other being the RMX80, which are this kind of club standard size, which obviously is going to remind you of Pioneer mixers, because that's what the layout and the features look very much like. However, these are considered cheaper than uh, Pioneer mixers uh, while having the same kind of a huge um, well-built metal quality about them so they're, 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 they look and feel comparable uh, at the outset so how are they when we actually use them uh, how, how do they compare to the industry standard what are the pluses and minuses of them let's take a little closer look at them and find out so the most important part of any mixer of course this bit the channels four main input channels two line inputs for two of them, uh, one line input and one phono input or record deck input for the other two. So a lot of flexibility there. Uh, individual gain controls, of course, and VU meters per channel. Three band EQ, switchable from classic to kill at the bottom here. Really nice function that. Uh, kill just means that when you turn them all the way down, the music stops. So here, filters. All these knobs are big and rubberized, by the way. They, sound, they, uh, they feel good. There's our filter. You get one of those built in there per channel. Totally separate from all the other effects. So that's a nice, uh, a nice feature. Uh, so the channel is all good. The crossfader, nice. You've got crossfader assigned there as well. And this is inner fader compatible, so you can replace it with an inner fader if you wish. So the extra channels, if you like, on the mixer are here. This is the mic and auxiliary channel. Auxiliary is RCA inputs, and the microphone is a combi jack, which means you can put a, a, a normal jack, a quarter inch jack in there, and an XLR microphone, take your choice. So you choose your source with the switch there, and then you've got microphone and auxiliary volumes, also two band EQ there, and a talk over, which again is a nice feature to have. So this is the Q area. This is where you um, can plug your headphones in and control what they listen to. Here's your Q button, so you can Q everything, including your microphone channel. Uh, and there's a QEQ, a QEQ, um, which is a tone control, basically. Nice to see, not often the case on mixes, so that's good. Uh, and there's your Q level and mix. You got an eighth inch socket and a quarter inch, curiously, one's on the front and one's at the top, but it means you can plug different uh, sizes of headphone plug in there. So over on this side, this is where we get the beat counters and the EQ. It has got a display here. It's a pretty, pretty basic display, but it's got some of the stuff you're going to want on it. Two auto beat counters here. Uh, you've got channel start and crossfader start. This is useful if you're using, for instance, um, media players like we are here that are compatible with it because the channel start and crossfader start mean that you can get your CDs or your whatever you've got here starting with uh, just moving the crossfader or the channel. A lot of mobile guys like that. Uh, but back to the EQs. So uh, here, sorry, back to the effects. Here, here they are. So we've got, uh, let's just get some music playing and we'll show them to you. So this is currently set to the master output. You can set the effects to any of the, um, any of the inputs, but it's now just currently over the master. Turn the effect on. Here's your dry wet control. Just gives you the amount. You've got a manual time control here that you can just manually adjust the number of milliseconds that LFO is working over. Uh, but actually, you can tap it to guess the BPM as well. So there's something that isn't BPM properly. That's the way to do it. Uh, but having said that, uh, the main way you'll probably control the uh, the modulation of the effects is using these beat buttons here. So for instance, I've just moved that up a couple. It's now modulating every four beats on that track to give a, a, a bigger sweep on that. Now other effects, there's a nice delay in there, there's an echo, a reverb, all of these sound really good. The only effect I didn't really take to was the gate. Uh, the, the beat controls don't control the speed of the gate here, they just control the sensitivity, it's a little bit strange. And also the gate doesn't seem to cut between the stereo channels uh, the same, so it just sounded a bit stuttery to me. Didn't get on with the game. Pitch shift. Weird effects you can have with the pitch shift there. And then we've got a phaser, a bit crusher, and the classic noise effect is there as well. Which is affected by the chosen LFO there. Have some fun with that one actually. 
So before we wrap up, let's have a look, look at the back panel. So we have our channel inputs here, one, two, three, and four, uh, which have our line and phono RCAs. There are also ground pins for your two record decks. Uh, down at the bottom here, slightly obscured, are the two R TRS outs, the two jack outputs for your booth, uh, and the two XLR outputs for the master. Uh, and there's an alternative master output over here uh, on the right-hand side where we've got the um, master uh, RCAs and also a record output, which isn't affected by the master volume. So it's good to see a record output on a mixer like this. Um, that's pretty much it, really. These little leads here are um, the ones that are wired into these Reloop CD players to give a um, fader start that I was telling you about earlier. So it's like a control cable. Useful to see a Kensington lock on here. Uh, not that it's the kind of thing you could easily run off with, but you never know. Um, just a couple of other little things to point out here. And the main one being that the USB service port that you can see here is just that. It's just a service port. It's just for updating the firmware and stuff. It's not for accessing the inbuilt audio interface or anything like that. Uh, there is no USB audio interface that you can use with your software on this. Um, and here, power on off and the big fat kettle lead for getting your power into it. And that's um, what it looks like around the back. So the good points of this mixer, great build quality, four channels, big filters, sound great, uh, two sets of um, Two choices on your EQ is your isolator and your classic, which is switchable. I really like that. Uh, your two auxiliary channels is really flexible, especially with the uh, inputs at the top there for both of them. So your microphone, your iPod or whatever is your backup source, easy to do. It's got a lot of the bells and whistles of bigger um, mixers, of club installation mixers. Stuff it's lacking, there's no send return for effects at the back. It's not a digital mixer insofar as you can plug your uh, DJ software into it and control the audio interface from your DJ software and play DJ channels straight into it. That's not uh, what digital means in its name. What digital means is the architecture inside is digital, which really is neither here nor there um, for, for the average DJ, but just don't get confused with that. Stuff I didn't like so much, I think the effects are, are pretty good. I didn't like the gate on the effects. I think that's just a, just doesn't sound that good but most but they the rest of them sounded okay uh, and your there's no midi here at all either so if you wanted to use it as part of a midi setup then it's not going to be uh it's not going to be for you but overall uh good value for money well built uh, and if you're looking for a, a club standard club feel mixer uh, for your setup and you can't drop the cash on the uh, the industry leader the rmx60 from reloop is a really good alternative so I hope you've enjoyed this review. Please do subscribe to the channel. There is a link below me to do that and also to join Digital DJ Tips. So please uh, consider doing both of those things and we'll see you again very soon.